Speed Racer the Game, Game Review. License games tend to suck. They're glitchy, they're really limited in design and such, they're rushed, and sometimes incomplete. This one is not incomplete, but it is some of the others. When watching Speed Racer the movie, however, you do kind of feel like you're watching a video game. Not through the whole movie, but certainly in the racing. So really, all they had to do here was program and, you know, incorporate those designs already there. And I think that's what they did. Pretty much everything from the movie seems to be here. There are only five tracks, but there are different ways to drive through them, clockwise and counterclockwise, and three lengths, so there are still some different variants to them. There are about a dozen and a half characters, and each has only the one car, and the cars cannot be upgraded, but they do have different stats as far as speed, acceleration, handling, and I think strength is the last one. The levels are quite colorful, in fact the entire game is quite colorful, but it doesn't strain your eyes, which is good because it's coming at you at really fast speeds, 4 to 800 kilometers per hour. The levels are also pretty sufficiently different from one another. There's one that has you going inside, yes, a volcano, there's one that feels like you're in a pinball game, well, several of them kind of feel like that. There's one that's kind of Las Vegas style. Now, the game has a bit of a childish tone to it, and there's some annoyance in the fact that every time you pass an AI or they pass you, they will taunt you. Thankfully, you can, you know, take away the headshot and subtitling of that in the menu. The menus are kind of lazily done, very cut and paste, but it does seem like you can actually play championships in multiplayer. There are 27 championships in total and it appears that every single one of them unlocks something. At first it's a character and of course the next championship le level and later on it's cheat codes. The cheat codes are okay but they are kind of basic, you know, it's the, they had a little extra time so they played around with the code some and had some fun with it. Some of them are really weird and don't work all that well. Now, the movie, and presumably also the show, I've never watched it, has the cars able to spin 360 degrees, so of course you can also do that in this game. You can do something called sliding, which basically has you turn the car 180 degrees, or I think any degrees, I haven't used it an awful lot, and still proceed ahead. With that said, one of the biggest issues in this game is the whole thing with when you're spinning or when you're facing the wrong direction, because you do not drive as fast as when you're facing the right direction. And they had to deal with this, of course, because the whole spinning thing is in the show, or at least in the movie. And with their limited amount of time, they did as well as they could. I would say mostly just auto-corrects to where it's trying to turn your car back around. But sometimes you do wind up with the car facing in the wrong direction. And this is where you really need a self-destruct button, because it's almost impossible to drive over the edge. Mostly you'll just drive on the very edge, and that's not necessarily a good idea to do for very long periods of time. Or sometimes you fall off if you were driving upside down. Yes, there are crazy loops in, I think, all of the levels, and really tight turns also, so it really challenges you. Now, the car will explode if damaged severely. This is because you can use car foo against the enemies. Whenever you pull off one, it goes into slow-mo, which I guess is the farthest they could go in recreating the style of the movie. The camera is completely basic race game camera. Now, basically, you can 
jump to the sides, you can jump forward, you can jump backward, you can do somersaults. If you land on another car, it will do damage, and if you spin into another car, it will make him spin and cause the aforementioned problem for him. So, yeah. This is a pretty fun aspect of the game, and it isn't very difficult to master. Also, the game has a great tutorial that teaches you how to do all these things right off the bat. And you can always return to that and practice if you happen to forget something. The game is very quickly gotten into and mastered, and since there are still relatively few opportunities in the game, you may just want to go for a rental. Just, you know, over the weekend, invite a few friends. Note that the multiplayer actually only supports two players at a time. The, the levels have this one type of obstacles that you'll want to avoid, and then speed up squares that you'll definitely want to make a note of, make a mental note of where they are, and try to hit all of them because they really make a difference. That's one great thing about this game. It is always intense. There is pretty much no such thing as an insurmountable lead in this game. You can go from being first place at the beginning of a lap to still coming in 20th place. And you can, and the opposite can also happen. As you drive fast, you will work up these boosts. Now, you can either trade these for health if you want, if you need. There's even, I think, at least almost a second between you losing all your health and you exploding, so you can save yourself if you are on the brink of going kablooey. Now, if you... There, there are four of these speed boosts that you can store up, and if you have all four, you will enter the zone. The others are just... Well, all of them are increasingly fast speed boosts. The zone also makes you temporarily... I don't want to say invulnerable, but basically they can't make your car spin or... I'm not sure if they can damage you. I've never been landed upon when I was in the zone. Do note that if you yourself mess up the direction of the car, it will still be messed up. The game is fun, but it's not something you'll necessarily be returning to once you've completed all the championships, other than you know playing multiplayer. And it can be good fun for some short stretches of time. And like I said, it almost always is intense. But yeah, all in all, not necessarily something you need to own. But if you watch the movie and you think that thing with the loops and attacking the other cars like that, that looks like fun, play this game. It's a lot of fun, and on the Wii, it's very immersive, because not only is the Wii mode your steering wheel, as it is with, as it appears, all the racing games with the Wii, you also do quick moves with that to engage in car-foo. So, it really feels like you are controlling the car. 